Hi and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. This episode gives a structured approach to calculating the number of ATPs from the beta oxidation of even numbered saturated fatty acids. Before we commence this presentation, I need to talk about high energy commodities. The body, and more specifically your metabolism, produces a variety of these that it trades for energy currency in the form of ATP. Simply put, these commodities could be compared to the energy commodities in this modern world, such as crude oil, natural gas, and gasoline. All of which have a commodity price, commonly denoted in US currency. So what are the body's high energy commodities and what are their exchange rates in terms of ATP currency? Well, when it comes to energy metabolism, we have three key players, NADH, FADH2, and a closely related cousin to adenosine triphosphate known as guanosine triphosphate, abbreviated to GTP. It is important that we establish the exchange rates for each of these high energy commodities before proceeding any further. When connected to the electron transport chain, one NADH has an exchange rate of 2.5 ATP, while one FADH2 has an exchange rate of 1.5 ATP. Finally, one GTP directly produces one ATP within the citric acid cycle, so it has an exchange rate of only one. As you might be aware, each beta oxidation cycle generates one FADH2 at step one and one NADH at step number three. If we apply the ATP exchange rates for each of these reduced coenzymes, it is clear to see that one turn of beta oxidation generates a potential of four ATPs as a direct result of the production of both these reduced coenzymes. In addition, each beta oxidation cycle also produces acetyl coenzyme A during step number four. Each acetyl CoA acts as an entry point into the citric acid cycle. In short, each single acetyl CoA produced during beta oxidation causes the citric acid cycle to spin once. Each spin or turn produces a number of high energy commodities. At steps three, four, and step number eight, NADH is produced. While during step five, a single GTP and step six produces a single FADH2. If we now apply the ATP exchange rates for each of these molecules, we can now begin to calculate the total number of ATPs for each acetyl-CoA produced. In total, one acetyl-CoA entering into the citric acid cycle leads to the production of three NADHs, giving 7.5 ATPs one FADH2 giving 1.5 ATPs and one GTP giving one ATP. Adding all these up gives a total of 10 ATPs per turn of the citric acid cycle. Or put another way, every acetyl-CoA produced by beta oxidation equates to 10 ATPs. So in summary, acetyl-CoA produced from the beta oxidation of fatty acids is equivalent to 10 ATP when entering into the citric acid cycle, while the reduced coenzymes FADH2 and NADH generated at steps one and three from each beta oxidation cycle contribute a total of four ATPs. We can use these numbers to calculate the total yield of ATP generated from an even numbered saturated fatty acid using a three step process. Step number one, begin by calculating the total number of acetyl CoAs produced from the beta oxidation of the fatty acid by simply dividing the number of carbon atoms from the fatty acid by two. 
So a C16 saturated fatty acid would generate eight acetyl-CoA's. Now multiply this number by 10 ATP to give a total of 80 ATPs. Recall how each acetyl-CoA produced during the beta oxidation of a fatty acid is equal to 10 ATPs when connected to the citric acid cycle. Hence the reason why we multiply the number of acetyl-CoA's by 10. Let's now move on to step number two. Using the same C16 saturated fatty acid, we can now calculate the number of ATPs generated from the reduced coenzymes produced from each beta oxidation cycle. In order to achieve this, we first need to calculate how many beta oxidation cycles it takes to produce the above number of acetyl-CoA's. You may recall from one of my earlier episodes titled Beta Oxidation Part 1 that the number of beta oxidation cycles is equal to one less than the number of acetyl-CoA's produced, resulting in seven beta oxidation cycles. Each beta oxidation cycle generates four ATPs from its production of reduced coenzymes FADH2 and NADH. So if we now multiply the number of beta oxidation cycles by four, this results in the production of 28 ATPs. Finally, during step three, we need to subtract two ATPs for fatty acid activation. Adding the corresponding totals associated with each of these three steps gives a total yield of 106 ATPs for a C16 fatty acid. One more thing before I wrap things up with this section of the presentation. Within this three-step process, the number of ATPs associated with each acetyl-CoA always remains at 10. Each bitter oxidation cycle always remains at 4 ATPs, and fatty acid activation always remains at minus 2, irrespective of the length of the saturated fatty acid chain. In short, these values you should consider as fixed values, while the total number of acetyl-CoA's produced and the total number of beta oxidation cycles it takes to produce these acetyl-CoA's you should consider as variable values that are dependent on the number of carbons within the fatty acid chain. So in summary we have three fixed values. 10 ATP for each acetyl-CoA produced. 4 ATP for each beta oxidation cycle and 2 ATP which needs to be subtracted to account for fatty acid activation. In addition to these three fixed values, there are two variable values which are dependent on the number of carbons within the fatty acid. These include the number of acetyl-CoA's which are calculated by dividing the number of carbons within the fatty acid by two and the number of beta oxidation cycles, which are one less than this number. Using this template, you can calculate the number of ATPs from any even numbered saturated fatty acid, as long as you follow the steps in sequence. Based on this, it's important that you familiarize yourself with the process. Attempt the following questions to see how well you can follow this template. Model answers are included after each question to help you with your understanding. Learning check number one. Calculate the total yield of ATP from the complete beta oxidation of a C18 saturated fatty acid. Once again, don't forget to include the steps in your calculation. Okay, now pause the video and come back once you have an answer. Okay, so here is the model answer to the first learning check. Let's now move on to the second and final learning check. Calculate the total yield of ATP from the complete beta oxidation of a C14 saturated fatty acid. Once again, don't forget to include the steps in your calculation. Okay, now pause the video and come back once you have an answer. 
Okay, so here is the model answer to the second and final learning check. In my next episode, I'll be presenting a quicker and simpler way for calculating the total yield of ATP from the complete bitter oxidation of an even-numbered saturated fatty acid in the form of a new algorithm. While the previous process may have taken you a couple of minutes, this new algorithm will literally take you only seconds. Based on this, you can use this algorithm for multiple choice questions and check in your answers to both short and long answer questions, saving you time and stress. So please subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when this is released. Finally, if you found this presentation to be useful, please click like. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.